Citizens, it's that time you are officially in Alert Zone. Welcome to The Alert Zone TV. I'm the wizard, Uncle James. I would love for you to become an active member of the Alert Zone by hitting the uh, subscribe button, a citizen. Hitting the bell so you can be notified when we drop fire content. Giving the video a like, sharing, commenting. If you're 18 or older and you are able to be legally armed here in America, Practice your Second Amendment rights. It is not wrong under the Constitution. So, excuse me, before I get started, I just want to shout out everybody in the Alert Zone. Um, it's a worldwide movement. We starting to gain momentum. Um, not only are the citizens citizenship growing, the views is growing, on things that I think is important because this is a Second Amendment channel and there's a whole lot of elements to the Second Amendment a lot of people don't understand a lot of people don't understand how social economic political and racial things tie into firearms and a lot of people don't want to hear that um, this may not be the channel for you this may be the channel for somebody you know. Somebody you know may agree with or like the content that's here. You may not like it, and I understand that. Every channel ain't for everybody. There's content channels here on YouTube that is just strictly gun reviews. And then, hey, I watch it all. You know, I, I don't have an issue with that. Here, not only do we show firearms and what have you, we talk realistic about things that's sur surrounding firearms, and we always advocate for why people should become legally armed. You know, sometimes the subjects may make people feel uncomfortable because people maybe never had to deal with that in their life, so they don't fathom those things. But that's why you come to your uncle, because your uncle gonna tell you things that your mom and dad ain't. You can go talk to your uncle about things that you can't talk to your parents about. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, your parents may tell you things to shield you from it. Your uncle going to tell you what's out there so you know how to deal with it. So, I wanted to talk about a message to the youth. Um, horrible choices long-lasting daily consequences what you talking about huh? first of all this is fair use this is fair use this is brand new video of a fourth suspect just arrested and taken into custody in that deadly sweet 16 party shooting in Douglas County Tonight, new details about how a gang may have been involved in what led up to the deaths of two teenagers. Good evening, I'm Alan Depp. And I'm Savannah Louie. We want to get right to Atlanta News first. Megan Packer, she is live for us at Douglas County Sheriff's Office west of Atlanta. And Megan, you were there right as that teenager was taken inside. Sorry about this, it's fair use. And Savannah, he was surrounded by the sheriff and a team of investigators who have been working this case nonstop. I can tell you, as this community looks for answers about this devastating shooting, we are learning more about the tipster. Uh, we're learning that the tipsters who did come forward in this case don't even want their reward money. Our Atlanta News First camera was rolling for a moment. Investigators and victims' families have been waiting to see. 17-year-old Kingston Cotman was led into the Douglas County Sheriff's Office in handcuffs. How are you doing? Sheriff Tim Pounds making a point to personally walk the suspect inside. Do you have a comment? Anything you'd like to say? Silence from Cotman, the fourth and latest team to be arrested in connection to a deadly shooting outside a Sweet 16 birthday party from earlier this month. The sheriff's office also arrested 17-year-old twin brothers Chase and Chance McDowell, who attend New Manchester High School, and 18-year-old Timothy Coleman. It was all gang-related. Maybe gang retaliation. But the sheriff stopped short of saying which gang or what or who the target was. 
I ain't gonna give him no air time. I ain't gonna decorate him on air. He says the two teens killed and seven injured were all innocent bystanders. He showed this gun, he says, was confiscated at the time of Coleman's arrest in Cobb County. I looked them dead in their face. They looked me in my face kind of, but they, they head was kind of down. Chanel White buried her daughter, 14-year-old Asia A. Hill, days ago, but was in court to see the suspects this morning. It is definitely a sad situation, um, and they are so young. And they done threw their life away. The family of 15-year-old Samuel Moon, who was also killed, is grappling with the motions of burying a young loved one and seeking justice. Every day it's different. Every day um, it's a new layer of, of feelings, of emotions, and trying to understand why, which is the big question. And these four suspects are facing a list of charges, including malice murder, aggravated assault, and aggravated battery. The sheriff tells us gang-related charges are pending. We are live outside of the sheriff's office in Douglasville. I'm Megan Packer. Atlanta News First. Megan, thanks. All right. That's fair use. Um... I didn't have sorry I didn't have everything uh, already keyed up I wanted to show the one scene but I'll discuss it with you guys and girls and y'all can um, go and look it up hold on one second yeah sorry about that but you guys seen that there's also a clip of one of the twin boys that got arrested for this crime. Um, when he's getting read his sentence, oh, well, his charges and possible punishments to the judges, he starts crying. I mean, he breaks down bad. He's wailing. I don't know if he's crying because he got caught or he's crying because of what he took part in, what have you. Allegedly, you know, you have to use those kind of words because he hasn't been convicted of a crime. He's only being accused, so I have to. Play it safe and say allegedly. Uh, as you see, they said the one team, they showed him with the Glock, with the extender on there. I know y'all couldn't see that real good and forgive your uncle. I got this 80s nostalgic look that I'm just holding on to. Um, nevertheless, you guys can YouTube that about the, uh, the Sweet 16 shooting in Douglasville. And you seen that the kid had, like I said, the Glock with the extended magazine. And, you know, people wonder why I bring up certain things. I want you guys to think about this. These guys went to 17. Three of them were 17 and one was 18. They went to a sweet 16 party. Supposed to be a members of some damn gang. And shot up a bunch of innocent people. Not even threw their lives away. They didn't throw the lives away of them young kids. No telling what they could have been. Let me tell you something to the youngsters. I know a lot of times y'all feel like y'all disrespected by older people. And let me make this let me let, let, let me make this statement. I understand some of y'all got offended because I made fun of skinny jeans. I'm from a different era. We didn't wear that. I'm not gonna get into, you know, all that. I, I seen some people got upset about that. And uh, when I was a kid and when I came up, our fashion got made fun of too. We took it on the chin. You know, we didn't, you know, it was what it was. So I understand that. But in the context of what I was talking about, I think you guys and girls understood what I meant by that. So I'm going to try not to attack skinny jeans anymore. But, I just want to say this to the youth. Man, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Them little boys, 17 years old, and they're going to be charged as adults. Let me tell you something. When they go to prison, they're going to be 17, 18, 19 years old when they go to prison. They're going to be around a bunch of lifers. With the charges they got, if they get convicted, they're going to be around dudes that's doing life without parole. Let me explain something, youngsters. Shout out to the Louisiana Weekly, man. The newspaper that they used to have in New Orleans. I'm not sure if it's still around. 
I read an article, and I don't know if I talked about this, but I'm going to talk about it again. Where it said when you go to prison, everybody that loves you go to prison with you. So this saga will never be over. These people lost their children. That man wanted to break down on camera because he had to bury his 15-year-old son. That lady buried her 14-year-old daughter for being at a party. What can be more innocent for a bunch of teenagers than being at somebody's sweet 16 party? I, I, I want to know that. What goes on in your mind that you go to a party full of kids and shoot and shoot people up? And let, 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 let me let me explain something to you about this whole gang culture, street life, what have you. A lot of you guys out there are cowards. You're ninjas. You're not real shooters. A lot of these guys that have issues with each other, they know where each other live. A lot of them live right around the corner from each other. They won't go and take care of that amongst each other. They like to go out around a bunch of innocent people where they can shoot and run through the fucking crowd. That's a coward's move. That's cowardism. If you don't, if you don't believe me, ask some of the people you know that's really into the street life. They'll tell you. Hey man, yeah. So and so and so and so and so live right over there. You if you guys want to get out here and shoot each other up, ain't nothing nobody can tell you to stop you. But for the innocent people, I want you to think about what they said. The tipster said they didn't even want the reward. Think about that. Law-abiding citizens are getting tired of the fact we can't go anywhere and do anything. We can't go to the fucking library because somebody wants to come in and act a goddamn fool. We can't go to the fucking grocery store because somebody wants to come in and act a goddamn fool. You can't go to the movie theater. You can't go to a fucking Sweet 16 party and just listen to the music and enjoy life while somebody coming in and acting a goddamn fool. Listen to me, young men and young women. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. As a matter of fact, hold on again. Okay, people, I'm sorry about that again. I'm back. Give me just a second. Give me just a second. And I know this is kind of unorganized. And bear with your uncle. Bear with your uncle. Judge today charged with Fair killing use. two innocent bystanders Fair and injuring use. seven others outside of a Sweet 16 party in Douglas County. Thanks for being with us. I'm Alan Depp. And I'm Savannah Louie. We want to get straight out to Atlanta News First reporter Megan Packer. Megan, you were in the courtroom, and this is very emotional for people on all sides of this case. Savannah, it really was. I can tell you family of uh, the victims were sitting not far from family members of one of those accused shooters. Even one of the suspects himself appeared to be distraught as he went before that judge. And tonight, we're hearing from the mother of one of the suspects who's apologizing. Are you chance, Carol McDowell? Yes, sir. Mr. McDowell, Judge McClain, I think we met yesterday. A 17-year-old murder suspect appeared to get emotional as he went before a judge. At one point, Chance McDowell hung his head and appeared to cry. The offense of murder is punishable by death, life imprisonment without the possibility of parole, or life imprisonment with the possibility. McDowell, his twin brother Chase, along with 18-year-old Timothy Coleman and 17-year-old Kingston Cotman, were all led one by one into a Douglas County Superior Courtroom to hear the charges there. Like I said, fair use. You seen that kid break down? I'm not sure, again, like I said, if he's crying because he got caught or reality hit, that he took these kids' lives and he just threw his life away at 17 years old. Let me tell you something. Be yourself. Everybody ain't a badass. To my men out there, to my young men, listen to your uncle. It's okay to not be a badass. It's okay to not have a tough guy reputation, and I'm going to tell you why. That's the reason I'm sitting here. When I needed to handle business, I handled business. But you know what? I like not having a tough guy reputation. You know why? 
I can legally carry a firearm. I can legally sit here and talk to you guys and say, hey, there's another side of this that these gangsters don't tell you. You got a lot of dudes, they go and they get convicted and they do 20 or 30 years and then they come out and reach the youth. They want to reach at risk youth. I'm telling you, you don't have to be one of those guys. If you do, that's your business. All I'm going to say is this. Um, Rick Ross has an album uh, title that says, God forgives, I don't. That's the mantra for the streets. God might forgive you for if you religious. The streets don't forgive you. The streets going to come and collect. Because you commit a robbery today, it might be two, three years. You might decide to get out there on social media and brag. Guess what? That man, that woman you robbed, their children you robbed, their friends, they may see you. They may come to collect. You could be to the point where, okay, you, you, you out of the street life, and now you're trying to live a righteous life. But guess what? Your past sins, you got to pay for them. You got to pay for them. When you out there in the street and you doing dirty business, you're going to pay for them. May not be today. May not be tomorrow. It might be 40 years from now, but you're going to pay for them. They're going to come knock. The street's going to come collect. And the streets usually want your life for their payment. You understand what I'm saying? When you go to prison, to the, to the men, to the young, young men out there. This going to be kind of explicit, but I'm just going to... You're talking to your uncle. You're not talking to your mom and your daddy. And to mom and dad, yeah, I got kids too, but to mom and dad, just don't talk. Just, just let me talk. Let me talk to your children. To you young men that got them little young girls, them little young fine things with them big titties and them big booties that y'all like and what have you, guess what? When you get locked up, you know what she gonna do? She gonna continue her life. She gonna stick with you for a while. Your homeboys you was running with gonna be the first ones after her. You know what they gonna tell you? Fuck, he got life without parole. He got 50 years. He got 30, 30 to 50 years. He gotta do 30 years before he's even eligible for parole. He ain't never coming home. I've been like you anyway. Let me tell you some of the things about the streets that you gonna have to answer to that you ain't gonna like. The streets don't tell you a lot of these guys that a lot of guys that got out here and got killed and sent to prison, their closest friends was behind them. Their closest friends killed them. Their closest friends set them up to go to prison. Their girlfriends. Other family members. They don't tell you about all that. They don't tell you about when y'all go out, go around, and these for the ones that's guilty of this. Doing these drug rip-offs, somebody got to pay for that. When you go to prison, guess what? Your mom, if you got a dad around, if your dad really love you, after a while, he going to let you go. Because you know what he going to feel like? Son, I, I, I did all I could for you, and you chose the streets. He'll talk to you once in a while. He's going he's gonna to throw his hands in there because that's a reflection on him. Even if he gave you everything you needed to succeed and you don't, and you turn out to be one of these teenage knuckleheads getting life in prison like these, that still falls on him. Everybody's going to blame the parent. You're a part of his legacy is he sent somebody to prison. That's the way men see it. I'm telling you this because I'm a dad. I'm an uncle, I'm a dad. And I'm a granddad. I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. When you get back there in prison, you still want to participate in this gang activity? Guess what? For those of you who are going to go back there for five or ten years, guess what you ain't going to... They, they're not telling you. The leader of your gang going to be somebody doing life without parole. He got three consecutive life sentences. He ain't never going home. You know what he going to be telling you? You got to put in work for the gang. Putting in work for the gang is what got you locked up. Now he gonna tell you, buddy, don't stop because you back here. Yeah, you took the charge and you kept your mouth shut and you ain't rat on nobody. But now you back here. So now you gotta adjust to life back here. 
So when we tell you, hey, we don't like deputy so-and-so, you got to go stick him? Are we going to stick you? What you going to do? Hmm? I'm not going to even get into the sexual part of prison because I'm not even getting I'm just I'm just talking to you about how when you get into this and they tell you it's for life, some of these guys and girls mean that. They will be thugging to, till the day they die, even in prison. Are you ready for that? The other three that was with this little young boy, they try to put a brave face on, you know, when he was in there like, think about your parents when you commit these kind of heinous acts. Your parents is sitting across from the parents of the people you allege killing. Do you know what kind of beefs that start? Think about it. You can start a beef between their parents and their your parents, their family and your family. Because their family wants justice and your family wants you to be found innocent. I'm from New Orleans. There's, hell, you can YouTube this. There's tapes upon tapes of fist fights breaking out in front of the courthouse behind me. Listen to me, to my youth. The 15 to 21 crowd is the crowd that I'm reaching to on this video because if you're 15, you're getting close to the age where you can buy a firearm. If you're about to get 21, you get into the age where you can buy pistols and don't have to worry about this, this, and that. Ask yourself, is it worth it? If it's worth it, you go right ahead on and do what you do. But you can't get up there and cry when it's time to pay the piper. Because if you're a kid that never grew up like I did, getting punished severely, when you run into stuff like this, you're not going to be prepared for it. You're not going to be prepared to have somebody tell you at 17 years old, there's a possibility you'll never see the light of day again. See, anything I did wrong when I was a kid, a lot of times I got extreme punishments, but I took them. For better or worse, it hardened me up. I'm not going to lie. It hardened me up. But I'm going to tell you guys about an incident that happened when I was young. And it made me recognize something that I carry with me to this day about the streets. My mama didn't like me having company in the house when she wasn't there. And, you know, I was the only child. And, you know, well, when I got a chance, I was having company. I would have, you know, a couple friends over sometimes, sometimes quite a few. Music and everything. Almost kind of like the movie House Party to an extent. When I knew my mama was going out with certain friends, and she going to say, well, maybe she may have a drink. Well, my mama might say, well, I'm not going to come home tonight. I was already at the age where I was old enough to stay home alone. I knew how to cook and clean, and you know how to... And this went on for a while. And my mama kept saying, I'm seeing footprints in the house, trash, this, this, and that. We had a shotgun house. For those of you who don't know, if you've never been in New Orleans, a shotgun house is a straight through. The living room is at the front, and the kitchen is all the way in the back. And the bathroom is all the way in the back. That's why they call them shotgun houses. And basically, you're going to walk through every room in the house. So... Uh, one day a friend of mine came over one morning and I hadn't talked to my mama that morning so I assumed she was still at work and we was kind of hanging out watching TV and I get a, there's a knock on the door and I come to the door and open it and it's my mama and I had told my friend to go to the back of the house and just to leave because I wasn't sure who it was. And he didn't. And my mama saw him. Needless to say, I got the crap beat out of me for that stunt. I got punished for two months. Summer was just getting ready to start. So and I had to be 11, 12, 13, around 12, between 12 and 13 at the time. And... Well, I was like, well, I know the routine already. I can't have nothing sweet to drink. I can't talk to nobody. I got to sit in the kitchen and just stare until my mama tell me to go to bed. Period, point blank. 
I knew the rules already, and you know, I got myself together after I got my my pounding, and I went and sat in the kitchen. You know, I had to listen to the long lecture for three hours, all that other stuff. What really hurt me about all that was when it was found out I got caught. People I thought would never say nothing started volunteering to my mom, old Miss Stephanie. I've been in your house. Oh, we've been in your house. Oh, yeah, James, he have us over there all the time when you're not there. People I never thought would speak on me spoke on me. They were volunteering information on me. Some people who wouldn't speak up uh, got in front of their moms or got in front of my mom or her boyfriend at the time, and he was kind of physically intimidating the way he was built. And they, they ratted me out. I had a couple of friends. They took ass whoopings for me. Because they refused to agree and they refused to say they was there even though they had been there before. And that angered my mom and what have you. But that showed me something about the streets. Just something that simple showed me at the end of the day when you get caught, boy, you never know who's going to come forward and tell what you're going to tell. Tell what they're going to tell. And to me, it just made me know that it's not worth it. It's not worth it, man. When you really need people to keep quiet, they're going to talk. Somebody going to talk. It happens all the time. You young boys out there, y'all don't understand. If five of y'all get caught, do you know the odds of all five of y'all keeping quiet is almost slim and none? Somebody's going to talk. The streets is just like the prisons. Information for sale. When you go to prison and your first day there and you walk the yard or whatever... When they go sneak up in your cell and go through your paperwork, they can't, if you 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 got convicted of what have you, they know you don't know, you you never been to prison, you ain't streetwise, you don't know all this, and then, then they send somebody to start talking to you. They want to learn about the crimes you committed. Because maybe he has 30 years and he's looking for some cases to close so he can get out. So you tell him, hey, yeah, man, man, yeah, I got arrested and convicted of this robbery. But the other 10 robberies, they don't even know we was involved in it. And then the next thing you know, you getting pulled in court and charged with 10 more robberies. You thinking there's somebody out on the street and there's somebody in the joint. Because let me explain something to you. Everybody in prison want to get out. The only people who put those brave faces on like that is those dudes that's doing triple life. They're the ones who saying, I ain't going to drop out the gang. They're the ones that saying... Is, is, is whatever it is till I die because they can't never go home. The odds of having everybody in prison keep their mouth closed, it, that'll never happen. It's always information for sale. People find out what you did. They find out if you got bodies. You give them details because you think you're trading war stories with these guys and the next thing you know they're talking to, they didn't sent the kite. They didn't send the kite to the fucking, uh, uh, oh, excuse me, y'all, I'm having a, a brain malfunction, to the COs, to the corrections officers. Next thing you know, they didn't ease them in there because they friends with the COs. They didn't ease them in there and gave all the fucking tea on you. So you went for 10 years and you're going to wind up doing life without parole. Your friends out on the street ain't going to come see you. If you don't believe me, get your parents to take you to Wherever the local jail is on visiting day and just stand out there across the street and watch all the women that go in the men's prison. Watch how nobody goes in the women's prison and watch how none of those boys go in the men's prison and see none of them dudes that they was out there trapping and acting a fool with. It, it doesn't happen. I'm telling you. I'm telling you because I know. Are you guys and girls ready for that? Ladies, <laughs> I don't even want to talk about the loneliness y'all going to feel. When y'all go back there. How y'all get all dressed up when your man go to jail and go see him. And you wear them low cut shirts. Yeah, I know saying things you shouldn't be saying, but I'm saying it. And you're trying to give him a little peep show and all that. You take his charge. He's not going to come down there and see you nine times out of ten. He might put a little money on your books just so he don't look bad on the street. But he's not coming. He's not going to do all that. He's not going to be standing out there in the rain and in the cold taking off from work so he can come and see his baby shit you don't believe me ask the women that's in the prisons 
Look at all these prison documentaries where these women don't have their husbands and their men coming to see them. They get back there and they get with all these other women and become a family because nobody comes to see them and check about them. These young men threw their lives away. Not only that, they threw a whole bunch of other people's lives away, their families, the victims, the families of the victims, the community. They threw everybody's lives away for what? When I asked the question, would you put a teen criminal down if you had to? These teenagers out here, and I'm not singling them out, but these teenagers out here, they don't have no hesitation to put innocent people down. There used to be a day when the gangsters in the neighborhood would tell people, hey, in New Orleans, they would call it La Daddy. Hey, La Daddy, y'all, hey, y'all, y'all come here. Get y'all stuff and go inside. They tell the women, Mr. Joe the mechanic or whoever, hey, man, get your stuff and go inside. Why? Because this motherfucker coming around here talking about what he going to do. Or if this motherfucker don't have my money when he come around here, I'm going to stretch him out. There's been threats of people coming through here shooting. These young boys don't do that no more. They look for the most cowardice times to go and pull these type of ambushes like this. A fucking Sweet 16 party. If there was somebody there that they went there for, they know where he live. They know where he hangs with his little bunch if they really wanted to get him. That was a cowardice act. And then threw their lives away. Yeah, I know when you get locked up, you got to play big chest and what have you. And you, you, you can't break and you can't show no fear. It's easy to do that in court. It's hard to do that back there in prison. Ask yourself, is it really, really worth it? Is it really worth going to prison? If, if it's worth it to you, then that's fine. I'm just throwing it out there. When I talk about things here in the alert zone, I'm not talking out the side of my neck. I'm not talking because I want to hear myself talk. I'm not making this stuff up. As I always tell you guys and girls out there in the alert zone, I can show you what I'm talking about. I can bring you evidence upon evidence upon evidence besides my own encounters. And I can tell you at the end of the day, there's very few people out here that's in the streets that got somebody... That's a street dude with them or a street chick that's going to ride with them. There's very few out here. When it's time to pay for your lawyer, everybody cries about a public defender, but guess what? Well, your boys have to put up money to get you a good lawyer. They not doing that. You know why? They didn't blew their money doing the same dumb shit you didn't did with yours. Or oh, they got their money for their own lawyer and they like, man, fuck him. I got to have money for a lawyer just in case he rat me out. You know, we say stop snitching, but how about this? How about don't put yourself in a position where you have to be labeled a snitch? How about that? Young men, there ain't nothing wrong with getting dressed in a nice outfit and going out and enjoying your life. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Some dudes and some chicks out here, that's just what they are. Period, point blank, and they're going to be there. But you know the street people that really care about you? The ones that really care about you and see something in you, you know what they tell you? I don't want you out here. I am what I am. I've already accepted the life that I'm going to take and the path that I'm going to take. I'm going to be in the graveyard early or I'm going to be in prison early for the rest of my life and I'm okay with that. But when they know that you're not like that, or maybe you're like that, but you got more potential than them. They come and tell you, hey, man, I don't want you doing this. I don't want you doing that. Yes, we can still be friends. Yes, when there's leisure, we can hang out. I don't want you out here trapping with me. I don't want you out here stealing cars with me. I don't want you out here doing this. I don't want you out here doing that. And I know some people may say, why choose those friends in the first place? Sometimes you can't help who you are friends with. Sometimes you're friends with people that's in the street life. That's, that's just what it is. We all live around each other. I was friends with some, some really, really rough dudes. 
I never seen them as less than, and guess what? They never seen me as less than. Maybe one day I might, I don't know, show y'all some pictures of me when I was young. For my people from New Orleans, you know back in the days when the projects was bricks, people would have on t-shirts and jabos and Reeboks. I would have on a Jay Riggins outfit with some Giorgio Brutini shoes in the middle of the fucking project at a block party. At a hood school dance, I'm Mr. GQ. I was okay with that. I never felt out of place dressing like that. There was times I wore my jeans and tennis, but there was times I felt like, hey, I want to put something nice on. I want to put me a nice watch on. I want to put me maybe a chain on. I want to put me a nice outfit. I'm going to iron my clothes. Put me a nice outfit on, some nice shoes. Uh, this is how I want to carry myself. And I was okay with that. I never felt less than, and people never treated me as less than. Hell, most people thought, this guy, either this guy don't give a shit, or he's crazy. Whichever one he is, if he got enough sense, if he got enough balls to come back here dressed like he going out on a date, don't fuck with him. I've walked every project in New Orleans. I've never had nothing happen to me because I mind my business. I knew some of the guys that's considered New Orleans legends, we all grew up together. We all grew up in the same neighborhood. I, 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 I could just go down a list of all the people I know. But at the end of the day, I gotta say, my closest friends always made me know, hey man, because you see us doing this, we don't want you doing it. And I'm always going to have love for them. And I'm always thanking them for that. Young men, young women, listen to me and listen to me good before I get off of here. Ask yourself, is it worth being in those young boys' position? Standing in front of a judge with your parents back there, crying. Putting their house up to bail you out. Them boys don't got no bail. They can't even go home. For those of you who your parents put the bail up for you. Those of you your parents spending eighty and ninety thousand dollars to get you defended, to try and get a, a good defense attorney for you. I understand sometimes crimes get thrown on innocent people. I'm just saying for the guys and girls that's into this, are thinking about it. If you can live with that result, be my guest. If you can't live with that result, don't do it. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Am I reaching? Am I going overboard? Let me know what you think. I am going to continue these messages to the youth. And I'm always going to add things to it. And show you how a lot of times we ridicule the youth. But you don't go understand because a lot of y'all that's out here in the streets. Y'all out here. Because y'all was born into this. And I'm, I'm going to address that in the next message to the youth video. I'm going to bring up some of the... We talk about the symptoms, but we don't talk about the core problems. To law-abiding citizens. I hate to say it like this, but I got to say it. These kids are menaces out here. Look at what these kids did. S shooting indiscriminately into a crowd full of kids. When I ask you to get legally armed, this is what I'm talking about. For all of y'all who run around here saying why you need extended magazines, you see what these kids got? Do you see what these children have? These guns are already on the street. All of you people talking about common sense gun legislation, these criminals already have all these weapons. Y'all know that already. Until next time, stay safe, stay on, stay on high, high alert to the youth. Listen to your uncle, man. Y'all our future. Without the youth, the earth gonna stop. Life gonna stop. We need y'all out here. A better place for you is out here with your family, not locked up back there. If you got teenage kids and you're not sure what they thinking about, put them on to the alert zone. Show them this. Hell, have them, here. have them hit me in the comment section. Y'all be safe out there.